Hello. This is Dr. Anne Louise Lockhart here joining you guys. It is time for another Instagram live and for us to discuss some balance stuff. So I'll give you guys a few moments to join up as we wind down our evening here. Hey guys, thanks for joining. <clears throat> So, um, sound good? You can hear everything so far? Picture's good? So, my name is Dr. Anne Louise Lockhart. I'm the president and owner. Hey, hey, Priscilla. Hey, Heidi. <laughs> I'm the president and owner of uh, A New Day Pediatric Psychology here in San Antonio, Texas. And I am going to be speaking with Zilot Lopez, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist and licensed prof professional clinical counselor in um, LA. So um, I'm very excited to be talking with her because we come from different perspectives in terms of where we are in life and how we're practicing, but sharing very common goals and values when it comes to many things. So um, I'm very excited about talking with her and then joining up with you guys. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them as they come up. So, hey, Arjuman, thanks for joining. You guys are awesome. <laughs> so Zilot is a uh, LMFT and LPC. Oh, gosh, that's too many acronyms. Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist and Licensed Professional Clinical Counselor in Los Angeles. Um, she is dealing with a lot of the wildfires there. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. There's a lot of stuff going on out there. I used to live in L.A. and it just breaks my heart to see that. So um, I'm very glad that she's able to join us in the midst of all that stuff going on. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing that. And let me. Oops. Make sure that we can join here. All right. Okay, I'll give you guys a few moments. All right, and Zilat, whenever you can, you go ahead and request, and then I'll accept it too. So um, as we start, um, kind of start up, you know, see if you guys have any questions, post them. Um, if you have questions about balance, what we're going to be talking about tonight is how to maintain balance while building an empire. Now, empire is a very large term because it's not like we're building a whole country or a nation or a corporation here, but it's about the balance in the in raising your kids, in um, doing any of those other things that are going on because many times what's happening is we have to find balance and it's hard to do that when you're not able to... Um, you know, basically know like what's going on here. So important that we balance that. So I think it's really important that we do that. So I'm happy to be talking to Zilat about that. So hey girl. No, I can't hear you. Hear you neither. Oh. Okay, there you go. Ah, there we go. Okay. It's connected. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm glad we are able to work this out with the time zone and all that stuff and yeah. everything. So awesome. Did you have a full day today? A very full day, but it's very passionate. I got to see clients back to back to back. <laughs> yes, I actually like that. I like that on certain days and then to then decompress other days, too. So I think that's great. So um, so let's just jump right in. All right. Yes, let's do it. All right. So what shall we what shall we start with? What do you think would be good for people to talk about? I know that we talked about a few things in terms of like the mind, body, spirit kind of balance. Shall we start there? Yeah. You know, I okay. think what most important conversations that I have with people when we talked about self-care, we talk about balance as clinicians, as mental health professionals, or just professionals in general, is the idea that how much are we really investing back into ourselves? So I like to keep the 30-30-30 rule, where 30% of everything that I make financially, I put back into my mind, body, or spirit mm -hmm. as, as, as far as um, balance. So okay. I definitely think it's important to have a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, to have a spiritual healing of some sort, to have therapy, to have a coach, to have all different realms that help that balance just kind of stay there. Right. Yeah. Right. I love that. I love that. Where are the, where's the other 30, 30? Well, the other 30% is how much energy am I putting out versus getting back versus just staying neutral. Mm -hmm. So knowing okay. the balance of where am I allocating my energy and is it being, is it been investing wisely? 
So knowing where am I investing my time, but also uh, the people that I'm around, is it energizing? Is it just neutral? Or is it like energy sucking of really reading that well? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, you know, as business and boss people, we, Uh um, we're balancing a lot of stuff. And every time we see a new opportunity, we're like, Ooh, that's really cool. And then we take on, we keep saying yes and yes and yes. And even though they may all be good, it may not always be good for us or it may drive us away from our purpose. Right. So, you know, how do you determine, because I'm sure you get a lot of requests to do a lot of different things. How do you determine what to say yes to and what to say no to then? Oh, what I do you love think this good- question because recently <laughs> I, I've come to this understanding this year, actually. So I'll preface it with this. I used to say that my lifetime goal was to get married and have some babies and just start a family. And then I superseded that because I understood that that was conditional. That was conditional mm-hmm. upon other individuals being part of my growth and just prosperity. And then this light bulb just hit me one day when I was having a conversation with a family member. And I came to the conclusion that my lifetime goal is actually to die much more healed than wounded. And Mm. that's important for me to understand and to keep with me every single day. So when I choose to do something, I ask myself, Z, is this going back to your lifetime goal? Is this in any way healing you and or healing others? And if it's not, then the answer is a quick, hard no. And if right. the answer is yes, then I decide where I want to allocate my time and how I want to schedule it. Okay. I love that. I love that. I feel the same way too. I feel like if it's something that goes along with my philosophy of my practice, of the way I see things, is that I want to help people heal, I want to educate, and I want to inspire. And so okay. if the things I'm doing, if I'm asked to do a blog, if I'm asked to do an article, asked to do an interview, a TV show, if, if it's falling in those areas, then yes. But if, you know, when people are like, oh, they called you, why didn't you do that show? It's like, well, because it had nothing to do with what I wanted to do. So mm-hmm. even though, yeah, it may get me publicity, that's not what I'm about. I'm about falling in line with what my purpose and passion is, because then, yeah, you'll get burnt out real quick, real, real quick. So so what are some of the roles that you have? Because you're a therapist, you see patients or clients. What are some other things that you do? Well, I am an uh, emotional development coach. So I do keep that difference between when I see mental health clients looking for therapy, those are patients. And then uh-huh. clients to me would be coaching clients. So okay. I really thrive off of that because I love working with professional women that mm-hmm. have everything, but they're just not really sure how to allocate areas of their life, how to make right. it thrive. I have so many women right now that I'm working with that they are just popping in their professional life, but intimately or on the personal side, they may not be thriving. Their friendships or their romantic relationships are not where they want them to be. And that goes all full circle. The way we do one thing is normally the way we do everything. So it's really just taking a step back and seeing, Hey, what's going on here? And it's fun. It's fun working with other people that are motivated. Yes, I agree. I agree. And we have a sneak that come in here. I think that's from Heidi seeing it. Love that. I always ask myself, is saying yes going to harm me in any way? I have to say no. And it has to be good for my mental, physical, and relational health. Yes, that's exactly right. Because then we'll be spread too thin and then burnt out and good good for any not good for anybody, actually. Right? Absolutely. I okay. would even add in there like the spiritual health too, if that's an yes. aspect that you want to take care of. Because I have to check in with myself all the time. Like, what did I carry with me from session? What is coming with me and how do I clear that in a a healthy manner? Right, right. I think what's also important, too, is in the moment, too. So, like, when I'm supervising trainees, I tell them that if you're feeling a kind of way when you're with a patient and you're feeling really aggravated, really irritated, annoyed, sad, any of that kind of stuff, you have to pay attention to is there a parallel process going on in the room? Are you feeling what the child or the wife or the husband might be feeling and then you have to process that because if not there's going to be a lot of over identification going on and you're going to get more burnt out or overly invested in that particular patient or family and that's where the supervision and the consultation comes in so for me a, a big way that i maintain balance and avoid burnout is to consult with other colleagues to make sure that if i'm having some emotional or mental reaction to something that someone has told me i want to make sure that i process that Um, And I think, you know, people often think, oh, when you're in training, that's what you do. You get supervision. I'm like, no, even as a seasoned professional, you still need to get that. Absolutely. I couldn't agree Mm -hmm. more. And I definitely am somebody that drinks their own Kool-Aid. Like, I'm a firm believer that if I provide a service, 
I also need to be clearing myself to come correct. So I right. do go to therapy. I coach. I have a coach. Like every single week and monthly, I am there. I'm like, okay, I need to talk about this because it keeps me fully present and honest more than right. ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So you see patients for mm -hmm. mental health. You Correct. see coaching clients mm -hmm. for mainly like business Correct. women. Yeah. The okay. emotional development to make more profit. How to use your emotional intelligence to have better conversations, how to close deals, how to just connect with people because it's marketing too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What else do you do? I teach. I actually have had the wonderful opportunity of teaching mental health courses at Charles Drew University. So the great thing is that Charles Drew University in South Central LA has a 90% diversity rate. And that is wow. unheard of. Yes, it has a 90% diversity rate. And I'm really big on other people being a reflection of what our upbringing is. And I mean that as a woman of color. Because I know when mm -hmm. I was small, I didn't have that. I remember the first time right. I ever saw a professional woman of color, it was probably up until high school. It wasn't wow. until, yeah, where I saw that. I was normally the only little girl in my class that had a year-round tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the experience for sure. So it's very delightful to go ahead and also mentor. I mentor two young women that are going into college that are of color that are seeking a profession within the medical field. So, okay. then, yeah, that's, that's awesome. definitely fun that's for awesome. me. Yeah. Okay, so that's your third role. What else do you do, Z? Well, I am a licensed cosmetologist, so I, I definitely glam brides on the weekend, brows on fleek, doing their hair, <laughs> and I love it just because I've realized over the years that it's not just about doing their makeup or their hair, it's the day right. for them, and they just really need a secret space to like decompress and be like, okay, this is happening, and in mm -hmm. being a mental health professional, I definitely keep in my lane. I'm not trying to do therapy, but I'm right. able to hold space for them. And get their hair like looking amazing. There so you go. Great right. skills. Yeah, these are great skills that I just learned behind the chair. A barber shop or a beauty shop, it's nothing but just processing in there. It's just it's, it, it really is. Yeah, it's sharing and it's in a very great space where it's like, girl, and what happened? What happened with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I enjoy it. That's cool because I, I remember years ago when I used to watch um, What Not to Wear uh -huh. on TLC. And they would do all these makeovers on people. And it was always, it always struck me, like, people especially who were, like, stuck in the 80s, right? They had the yes. mullet going on. They had the envelope, the parachute pants, <laughs> two-tone yes. jeans. The big perm. And one, the big perm. Right, right, totally. Uh -huh. And they would rock it out. And they thought that, like, they looked great. And I remember Stacey and Clinton, they would say, when people are, like, stuck in that style, that hairstyle, the clothes, the clothes, whatever it was, it's that they felt most beautiful during that time. And they got stuck there. And I remember my husband and I would always say, hey, when you have your own practice, it would be awesome if you can have like a holistic thing where you're not just in the mental health and helping them, but also doing like the styling and the hair and the makeup. Because, you know, I, I don't think it's shallow. I think that part of how you look and how you dress is an expression of how you feel. Yes. You know, and so I think all of that stuff is good in terms of balance and and mental health and self-care and avoiding burnout. All that stuff is great. So I love that. Yeah. Any other roles you know, that you have? The, um, the most important thing that I ever found working in the beauty shop is that unhappy clients never like their hair. No matter how bombacious and how beautiful mm. you be, they're just not happy. And that's where I really learned. I'm like, OK, wait a minute. This has much more to do with the mental health side. So my, my vision, my goal is to definitely have one of the first in L.A. where it's a combination. It's if a woman wants to work on the inside inner beauty, they work on the therapeutic side. And if they work on the outer, they go get their hair blown out or they go get some highlights, some color. So I definitely mm. want to marry those two within its lanes that are possible. Um, yeah. Just provide an oasis for women of like, what do you want to work on today? The inner beauty or the outer beauty? So that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. We're thinking the same thing. I love that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you do? Any other roles that you have? Let's see. Well, I'm, I, I, I'm, I would love to say that I'm a great cook because I love uh -huh. cooking. It's definitely part of my self-care. So I want to take more cooking classes. That's what I want to mm -hmm. do. So if anybody knows of any chefs or anything in L.A., I would love to get to know them. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I do know, too, that you do other kinds of speaking stuff other places besides, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So it's that you have those kinds of roles going on so that throughout your week, you kind of have a good balance between like what you're doing, who you're seeing, all that stuff. Does that make a big yeah. difference for you? 
Absolutely. I have to tell you, it keeps it interesting because, um, well, you're right. I do speak as a keynote speaker. Yesterday, I just mm -hmm. uh, was able to speak at Cal State Northridge. And yes. I was speaking on um, dealing with difficult people. And yes. it's not a subject, I don't know what is. And I yeah. love doing that just because I connect with different individuals within the corporate field or the business field. But it keeps it... Uh, it keeps me wanting more as far as speaking, as far as teaching, as far as doing therapy or coaching. It's a little mm -hmm. sprinkle of each so I don't get burnt out in each area. And then later I'm resentful about it. So yeah. that helps. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, for me, I find, so Monday through Wednesday, I see back-to-back -back patients. So I see probably anywhere from seven to eight patients back-to-back. -back. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It's very rejuvenating, actually. But then on Thursday, typically, I don't see any patients, and it's more of an admin day. So whether I'm preparing for a talk or preparing, you know, a new marketing thing or something new in the business, whatever it is, right? And then on every, probably like once a month, every like Thursday and Friday, I travel somewhere in the country and do a training for to speech, PT, OTs, teachers, counselors on some particular topic, usually around like ADHD or oppositional defiance, something like that. Um, and so I love that because yeah, like you said, it provides a good balance between seeing people, helping people, but then also teaching people how to help people. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, you know, you know, the stuff you're showing and teaching people the stuff, but you're also practicing it in daily life in your in your therapy setting. Um, so I love that because I think that 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 really helps in terms of the balance. So absolutely, um, I yeah. think it, it grows people. I think one of the most beautiful things that I received yesterday when I spoke at Cal State Northridge is the feedback. It's the yeah. surveys and the outcomes of like, how did you feel this helped you, if anything? What do you feel yeah. needs to be improved? And there's a big part of me that still cringes a little bit knowing that I'm going to get some feedback as a speaker, as a mental health yeah. professional, but it's so important just as human beings to get feedback in general of what could get better. And once we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, that way we're able to connect more with them. Some yes. of the best conversations have come from that vulnerability and saying, hey, what worked for you? What didn't? I try mm -hmm. and implement that too into every session, check in and check out. What are the light bulbs you're taking from this session? What worked for you and what didn't? And surprisingly, yeah. humorously, what I get is, well, you didn't have any mints today. Okay. <laughs> we will fix that next time. We'll have some chocolates and some mint. <laughs> right. That's easily fixable, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the least of my worries. <laughs> right. But I think it's also a lesson, like what I've been able to teach patients too, is about that, you know, letting them know that most people don't like feedback. It, it's not fun to receive it, especially right. if it's done harshly or not in a nice way. And so the way that I maintain balance for myself with that is saying that, hey, there's times when I'll receive a whole bunch of positive feedback and then I get one or two negative and then yeah. it sticks with me. And I'm like, why the heck am I like focusing? I have 50 positive. Why am I focusing on the one or two negative? And it's like, well, because I had that little inkling of doubt. What if I didn't meet the need of the audience? And so then I have to really then focus on, well, no, I met it most of the time. And how can I take what they said as something that then I can make it better for next time? So I think it's always a, a teachable moment for myself and to teach other people about how you can, you know, if you're putting yourself out there, you're going to get criticized. That's right. If, you know, it's funny, but they say if you don't have any haters, you're not doing something right, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when I was doing my ebook um, last year and with my ebook coach, she was, she loves haters and she's always talking about <laughs> how that she loves to like answer and respond to them. And I'm like, oh, I don't want all that because she's like, yeah, when you're putting yourself out there, people are going to troll you and hate on you and say all these different kinds of things at some point or the other, mainly because they're not doing anything and they resent you for doing something. That's true. <laughs> you know? Yes. And so, yes. yeah, because if someone is doing something amazing, they don't have any reason to then focus on your accomplishments and things you're doing. Like for me, I receive joy seeing people like you doing amazing things. Like that makes me happy to see that, but not everybody feels that way, you know? So mm -hmm. I think we have to keep that in mind. It's not about us. It's about them. Yeah. You know, one of the yep. most greatest articles I've ever read is uh, another clinician that sent it to me. It's called The Shine Theory. It was an article that was written examining the relationship between Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. And huh. really just, yeah, and the relationship <laughs> between women and just supporting each other versus throwing shade or trolling on each other. So they show that when there's powerful women that are really in their alignment and in their purpose, they shine with each other. There's no mm. outshining one or the other. It's just upholding and helping each other. Yeah. I love that. I love that because there's no competition. There's no competition. Right. And I've heard, I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm really reluctant to reach out because I've been rejected by other people because they feel like mm -hmm. me asking for help is 
I'm their competition. I'm like, that's nonsense. Like, do you know how many people are out there that need help? Yeah. How is it that me helping another therapist is like helping the competition? Like that is not the case. Right. There's There's enough for everybody. There's enough for everybody. Like me helping another child therapist doesn't take away from my ability to to treat a child. Like that's ridiculous. So I think it's really important that we make sure that we support each other and not view each other as competition, regardless of if we're in the same field or not. I think that's just ridiculous. Absolutely. And I um, think this is even important, just having the exposure of other mental health professionals on social media and letting other people know there's other platforms that you can use. And they're easily accessible mm -hmm. to other people to get to know them, their personality, what their specialties are. Right. Right. Exactly. So then you can complement each other rather than compete with each other. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So what about, we talked about the mind-body-spirit balance. Mm-hmm. We talked about the different roles that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we had met, we talked about previously before we jumped on this call is that um, talking about like self care and the messages that we get from our family of origin in terms of some of yes. that guilt that we have, right? Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? What does that yes. even mean? So you know, I'm really excited because exactly a week from now is Thanksgiving, and my phone cannot stop ringing off the hook. Like <laughs> y'all know, like family about it's about to go down. So I'm packed right now, and it's. It, it, I put out a video two weeks ago, and I titled it Seven Signs You Were Born Into a Dysfunctional Family. And I have to tell you, I got some very interesting seasoned uh, feedback on it. Um, and what I mean by that is different topics came up from that. And the biggest one is that, it, I, I want to say it's number three, we feel guilty about other people feeling some kind of way in our family of origin. So whether it's our family that feels guilty and then we feel guilty about that, we carry their their feelings. We hold ourselves accountable to something that's not our responsibility. And the most important thing to learn culturally is that there is this really great balance between enmeshment and independence. And for some cultures that are not naturally or originally from the U.S., it might be a little bit more collective. It might be a little bit more of like, well, what is my family going to say? Like, what do they think, right? But mm-hmm. it's important to know what works for you specifically. Is it a little more independent? Like, I'll see y'all maybe like twice a month or is it like every week, right? Right. It's important though to be aware of this because then you have Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and it's awkward at the table. Like, it's like, pass the mac and cheese and let me know why I'm not married and don't have babies. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> like, serve that on the plate too. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> It's true. I can definitely yep. relate to a lot of what people are sharing. Right, yeah. right. Because we do, you know, depending on the family we grew up in, we have this, I know for me, it was like the sense of obligation, right? That right. you do it and you show up, even if you don't really want to, because that's what you're supposed to do. And, right. and so then we end up having these messages that we take with us into our new family because that's what you're supposed to do. It's like, well, who says, you know, we have to create your own thing. And that's what my husband and I, we really decided early on in our marriage is that yes, we both come from certain things in terms of what was traditional, what was accepted, but that's all fine and good. So let's take the good stuff from that and let's create our, our normal for our family and what's our traditions. We don't have to do everything that our families did. But we could do what we thought was good, uplifting, and then create our own. And that's how we maintain balance in that sense. Because um, sometimes you just have to say, you know what? I, I, I have to take a rain check on this because that's mm-hmm. not healthy. Right. The, the biggest thing I think that I've been exploring lately is saying no sometimes doesn't feel right, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah. To say no. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The other component to that I think that it's important to understand is that sometimes our family members will give us an opinion that will be hurtful, but it's only as powerful as we give power to it, just as when they compliment us and they say we're the most wonderful thing ever. If I believe you about how horrible I am, I'm probably going to believe you about how awesome I am. The Mm -hmm. true great balance of a person is knowing like, well, in equality, I'm going to take the criticisms with the I'm going to take both. Yeah. Uh There you go. Wait, you you interrupted. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think that it's really important to make sure that we we do so then that way we don't then feel, because again, then we'll bring that into the work environment, right? We'll feel all bad. We have this wonderful, we're supposed to have this wonderful break and then we come back all like ticked off. Right. Because we had our own issues come up and so then when a 
patient brings up their family of origin issues, we're like, yeah, whatever, I know, I know what's that about, you know, and then we're like over identifying with their struggle when we're supposed to be empathizing. So right. <laughs> yeah. we're holding space for them and being like, well, okay, like what more about that? Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, what else shall we discuss about this whole balance with the family and friends and oh that's the other thing we talked about right is that mm -hmm. when you're having a business and then you either have someone you're dating married kids no kids social friends right like sometimes you have some of that guilt come up because you don't feel like you're spending enough time with someone or the other how do you balance that well you know recently i've been once again exploring this topic with different people and i've come to the conclusion that there's no such thing as a true fully balanced work life work life and personal life. It's just, it's like that tire that you know it's gonna work, but some areas it's flat sometimes and then it gets full. So mm -hmm. it's really knowing of where I wanna allocate my time, but what is fulfilling. It's beautiful to have people in your life that you don't have to be in contact with them all the time or even every month. But when you connect, you connect so well, it feels like no day has passed. Yeah. Those are really great true friendships, but also friendships that understand this is what your priorities are. Recently, I've understood that it's important to say, well, not that I'm busy, but these are my priorities. Because mm. we will catch ourselves as human much more being like, ooh, that's pretty harsh. You know what? Actually, that's not a priority for me right now. Yeah. So if we reframe yeah. and we choose our wording carefully, we know that it's not just us trying to pretend to be busy. It's just not a priority. Right. Because everybody's busy. Such. That's right. right. And it's everybody's busy. Yeah, and it's knowing what is at the top of the priority list. A shocker for a lot of people is they say, well, you know, it's my family, it's my partner, it's my business. But where are you in that? You need to be added to the priority list and actually number one. We all know that if we don't fill our cup, we can't help other people. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, and it's being comfortable with that. That's taken me some time, definitely, to put myself at the top of the list and just say, okay, when I'm good, then I can give to others instead of just mm -hmm. running thin. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I choose to see patients Monday through Wednesday and occasionally maybe on a Thursday, but like two people max, because yeah. I know that for me, then I get spent. But the other thing that I do to kind of maintain that balance too, is like, if I know that I'm going to be speaking and I'm away from my family and my kids, then if I'm gone on like, usually I leave on a Wednesday afternoon and I don't come back till Friday really late. So I'm not seeing them for like three days. But my, the, the deal that I have with my kids is that when I come back Saturday morning, we spend time with mom and the two of them and we find a new place that serves breakfast. Nice. Yes. So my goal in life is to find and eat at every establishment that serves hot chocolate and French toast. <laughs> I love that. What kind of French toast? Just good, yummy French toast made with cinnamon, milk and eggs. <laughs> That's and just that's cooked wonderful. just right. No sogginess, no nothing, just really just right. And then hot chocolate made with milk. Like, that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, that's what we do. It's like we spend, like, the morning going for breakfast, explore some because there's tons of places in San Antonio that you can get, like, food. And then we just spend the usually the morning together, and then that is our bonding time. So then instead of me being the mom who was gone and left them for three days, <laughs> it's, it's, it's some, a way for me to connect with them. And so for me, I used to feel really bad about leaving and I'm just like, mm -hmm. but they know they would, I come back and they're like, Hey, so mommy, who did you teach? Who did you help? What kinds of questions did they have? And so they understand it, you know? And I think for me, that's, that's been very helpful because I know that I'm not just going, but I'm also doing it for my family and I'm reconnecting with them when I come back. Yes, yes. But your yeah. children are learning from an early age that there's this great balance between independence and also being part of a unit. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And my so, son actually told me that he wants to be a psychologist because of me. Oh, that's awesome. That's the most beautiful thing yeah. ever to the ears, right? <laughs> I know, I know. And at six, that's like awesome to me because he understands. And he'll, you know, he understands what that means and to be able to help people and help them through their struggles. And I just love that. I think that's awesome. So, um, so anything else that you think would yeah. be important for people to know about? I, I, I highly agree with the idea that there's a big difference between solitude and loneliness. So mm -hmm. solitude is being with yourself and loneliness is feeling like you're not with anybody. I, I frequently hear people say, you know, I could be in a room with a hundred people and I still feel alone. Yeah. So 
there's this idea that we can only spend time with another person as much as we are able to spend with ourselves free of any type of connection with others, whether it be virtually, whether it be online or in person. So no Facebook, no Instagram, no emails, nothing, no connection with anybody else. The amount of time you spend with yourself is what you can actually be in true presence with someone else. So if you can't be with yourself for, let's say, maybe like a max six hours, you have no business being with somebody else because they will feel that disconnection that you're not fully there. So that's a challenge that I work on all the time. And I say, okay, I'm going to spend an entire day just with myself. And then the next day I go in and I have full connection with family members or friends. I love that. I love that. So then that really kind of balances it, balances you out so that you know that, okay, there's time for to be by myself and time to then connect with other people. Yes. But also yeah. knowing that I enjoy certain activities even with myself and right. with somebody else. Like, it's knowing that I have a relationship built with me, but also with others. Yeah. yeah. See, for me, I'm very much, um, I'm an introvert in the sense that I rejuvenate by being by myself. Mm. However, I love being around people and like schmoozing and socializing and presenting and like talking to people all day long in therapy. Like, I love that. But then like, if I'm talking, like when I do speaking, I'm speaking for six hours straight. Right. And I'm going, I'm having lunch with the participants and I'm talking, 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 talking. And then at the end of the day, and when they're like, Hey, you want to have dinner? Absolutely not. <laughs> right. You're like, no, I'm tapped. No, no. Yeah. And I can, if I like take like a two hour break and then I rejuvenate, I'm usually good to go again. But usually for me, it's like once I've spent that of myself, like even seeing patients all day, like I tell my kids and my husband, and they know this well, if I've been with patients all day long, when I come home, they need to leave me alone for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to decompress and then I can engage with you. Usually about after an hour, I can re-engage again. Yeah. You know, one of the greatest women that I've really looked up to and I was like, wow, when I learned this, Celine Dion, when she does concerts and she's just on the road and she's going like back to back on a night, she mm -hmm. will take an entire week after a, a concert tour and not be with anybody and just be with herself. Really? A week? Yeah, an entire week. An entire <laughs> week. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a lot to learn from that because she just gives mm -hmm. so much power, so much energy that comes out of her. And she's just, she's on point. Yeah. And I, I'm curious, like, I've never looked into it, but other performers or other artists that have so much energy coming their way, how they cultivate that into a healthy mm -hmm. manner. Right. Yeah. Well, and that makes sense because if you don't, that's when you engage in unhealthy coping, right? That's right. To disconnect. Yeah. To disconnect. Yeah. So, so I think that's why it's important to experience to see what happens from there. Right. Because that's why it's good to read it? your body and to read, to know like what can you handle and what can you not. And so if I know that I'm engaged too much and I don't get the chance to break, then I know that, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start becoming irritable and like not liking anybody's presence right now. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing so. a great point about reading the body. Um, uh, Louise Hayes is a great so resource. Are you familiar with Louise Hayes? No. Louise Hayes is this amazing woman. She actually passed uh, last year around this time, 2017, and it was a great loss. She wrote the book, mm -hmm. uh, You Can Heal Your Body. She healed herself from cancer, and she wrote this mm -hmm. great book where it has, like, this index, and it says every single ailment that the body has, what it could possibly mean emotionally. So mm -hmm. in, in my culture, as a Latina and speaking Spanish, whenever it is that we wanted to say something but we didn't have the opportunity to express it, we say that yeah. we swallowed that sorrow. We swallowed the anger. We swallowed the, the resentment. And it stays within your body. And it manifests into different things. And cool. a lot of people could agree or disagree, but I love that idea. So every time I'm feeling something in my body, I'll go back to that index and see what is this? What does my headache actually represent? What does my tummy yes. ache represent? Yeah. Yeah. Body I love that because language. that's really good because I think, you know, as a um, pediatric psychologist and working a lot with kids and adolescents with medical issues, that is what I always go back to is that, you know, if you have, if your physician has sent you to me because you feel <clears throat> you have this constipation or headache or what looks like seizures and there's no medical ideology or reason for it, then we have to look at what is the root cause of it? What is the psychological or behavioral reason for it? And oftentimes they're like, oh, there's nothing. Everything's fine. No, no, no. There's something. That's Let's right. get to the root of it. And there always is. There always is. Because our mind, our body, and our spirit are totally connected. And if something's out of balance, then it's going to affect us. It's the same thing with us as therapists. 
If you find that your hair is falling out, you have your skin is looking all messed up and, you know, you're feeling irritable or depressed or burnt out, you it's because you are out of balance and you got to get back. That's right. Intuition is the language of the soul. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So That's also awesome. listening to that, to that gut feeling of what is your intuition telling you about this situation or this interaction with people? I frequently right. ask myself now that when I interact with people or connect with them, how do I feel after that interaction? I check in with myself and I ask, do I yeah. feel inspired? Do I feel drained? Do I feel curious? What do I feel here? And once I do that right. and I got it down, it helps me process further. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Zilat, we have a couple of questions or yeah. statements. So Shade mentioned, hey Shade, uh, vulnerability ah. is the way. So yes, definitely, mm -hmm. I think vulnerability is key. Brene Brown talks about vulnerability, which I love that. Yes. Um, Dr. Heidi uh, Green says, what do you ladies do to prepare emotionally for speaking gigs? Hmm. Mm, okay. Emotionally, what do I do? What do, you, do you do anything emotionally to prepare? Yeah, kind of I do. So um, I actually have a speaking coach that I've worked with, and she's amazing. I love her to death. And I actually met her through Women Speak. And Women Speak teaches us to prepare by pretending to be an animal of your choice. And I've chosen a peacock. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a breathing technique. And it helps me check in with my body. And I definitely don't want to feel fear. I want to feel, I want to feel excitement. And they're cousins. They're cousin feelings. And with excitement, I know that the message is bigger than me versus mm -hmm. having this fear of me messing up. So that's the biggest thing for me, knowing, Z, there is a purpose for you sharing this today. And it's going to hit somebody's ears and it's going to change or hit their heart. That's what matters. I love that's, that. That's what helps me get through that. And then the, oh, my God, there's so many people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, see, I, for me, I don't usually get nervous anymore in, for, in front of audiences. I think I've been, I think I've been doing it often and long enough that I don't feel nervous. I, for me, that's what it is. For, for me, I, get, I take the feeling that I have and I transform the meaning of it. So if my breathing is getting a little shallow or my heart is racing, I was like, wow, I am so excited about speaking yes. today. Yes. And that's what I do. Because yeah. then I, and because then if I start to say, oh my gosh, my heart's racing, I must be so scared. I'm so nervous, whatever I forget, then, then it's like, then it's all downhill. So I usually then interpret that kind of racing heartbeat as, wow, I am so excited. And that's what I teach my patients too, is that it's important not to misinterpret your body signals because that's what brings on a panic attack or for you to kind of melt because then you're not reading it the right way. Absolutely. So. Reframe is the way to go. It's like, I'm not totally. scared, I'm excited. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's another one. I think that it is so important. I was raised very close to my family, but as I get older and grow emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, I realize I need my space from them. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree. Um, just because they're your family doesn't mean you should always be around them because sometimes there are toxic families and you don't need to be around that. So I love I, that's very, very true. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, let's see. I think that's it for the questions. So if you guys have any other statements or questions, um, oh, Carlos also put, it applies to men too, though. I don't know when that statement was, it didn't pop up earlier. Oh, maybe perhaps the work-life balance, the work-life yes. and personal. Yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, totally. Yeah, it, and I think, you know, like I, um, I was speaking to a, a um, a guy the other day and he was saying that, yeah, that I think so often guys are just meant to kind of man up and to kind of suppress those emotions and that they're not supposed to be all like vulnerable and all that stuff. It's like, you know what? That's like, we need to get rid of that mess because that's right. not true. There are guys who are stay at home dads. There are guys who are working the business. There are guys who are supporting their wives. There's some great men out there. So and men I think cry have... too. exactly. And that's okay too. <laughs> Exactly. I think one of the most the one of the most sacred things I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of and connecting with is men of color in my practice crying for the first time, actually mm. allowing somebody else see them cry. And I'm like, I'm honored. That's amazing that they actually opened up and they had a reparative experience with it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Therapy is a thing. I love it. It is. Yeah. It is. And I think, you know, when I tell I have kids that come in or even adults who say, yeah, I want to come and see you, but I feel like coming to see you means I'm crazy. I'm like, no, that's not true. 
I don't see crazy people and that doesn't mean you're crazy. That actually is a sign of strength. I said, if you know, if you go to a personal trainer, does that mean that you, that there's something wrong with you and you can't do it yourself? No, because sometimes you need direction. What if you go to a restaurant? Should you not let them cook for you? Like, hello, (laughs) it's okay to get the help and the service because sometimes you need that extra help, you know? So, yeah. I couldn't agree more. I always relate that with clients that tell me like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. I'm like, if you want to get summertime, fine. You're going to go get a personal trainer, right? It's the same thing with your mind. You got to get yes. somebody who's guiding you to just get on point. And exactly. Sure enough, they get through those blocks and then their business is just booming. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. So um, any final words of encouragement that you have for people listening that you think are uh, important in terms of you know, if they feel like there's a mindset um, that they need to get changed or they feel like they're not maintaining balance in what they're doing in terms of their business or their life, anything that you think, any final words of wisdom that you think would be important? Man, I can only come from what I've experienced myself, but whenever I have a block, I'm just like, what is this? I'll video journal and I won't share with anybody. This is literally just my own journal. And I have found that if I voice memo, that's only my tone of voice and what I'm saying, the content. If I write, I'm missing a lot of what's happening here. But when I do all three together and I do a video journal, it's really showing me, does my affect match what I'm saying? Am I saying I'm fine today? I'm feeling great when really I'm not. And Mm -hmm. me being able to reflect back on those, that is insight galore. It helps me increase my insight into myself about what was I really feeling in that moment. And that's helped me grow. That helps me take it into my own therapy session with my coach, with anyone really that I'm working on my personal development. Checking in yeah. with yourself. Meditation too. It's, it's a thing. I try and meditate 20 minutes a day every day. I'll use an app or I'll just go to a really noisy place to push myself and actually get to that place where I'm in peace. Yeah. And I tend to see colors when I meditate. And that's when mm. I try to see energies. Because then I'm feeling people's energy when I meet them or when I'm in session with them to see how they're feeling. Many a times I'll know what we're going to work on or what they're feeling by just the energy when they walk in the room. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. That's great. I think for me, what I would say is to make sure that, you know, you are in tune with your body. You read, um, get to know what your body needs when it does certain things. So that if you're feeling like you're getting a headache, you're feeling worn out, like meet the needs of your body. Um, And also then find a supportive network of colleagues in your field, friends, people who can support you that are actually uplifting and that don't tear you down. That is so key and keeping a well-balanced lifestyle and just kind of building you up. Um, and, you know, I think that's, I think that's really important. And to make sure that um, your, your family and the people in your life don't, not to view them as a burden. And then help them to kind of go alongside of you in your vision so that they're supportive of you. I think that's the thing that I'm most grateful for with my husband is the majority of the things that I'm doing today is because of him. Because he found it for me or he encouraged me to do it. I'm in private practice because of him. I would never have done that without him. So I think that that's important is to allow the people in your life to actually support you too. So That's right. Yeah, knowing when to receive and when to give in that balance. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're so used to giving, especially if we're a therapist, right? In the helping profession, as a social worker, as a counselor, we're so used to giving all the time. I think it's important that we also know that we can be vulnerable and we can ask for help and support too. Absolutely. So. Healers need healing too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. So Z, how can people get in touch with you? Well, on this social media platform for Viva Therapy, I also do uh, YouTube videos weekly on LinkedIn and on Facebook page. So across the board, it's Viva Therapy. That's the social media handle. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, make sure. Thank you, Christian Therapist Network. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, And uh, thank you again, Zilat, for joining me today and having this discussion. I always love your quotes. Of course, of course. All right, you have a good evening. Thanks, guys. Okay. Okay, bye. bye.